Hello, sorry about that. I just clicked the go live button and started coughing. Um, good afternoon, everybody. How are you? Hi, Lisa. <laughs> oh, I've gone all pink now. Um, right, I was just waiting for Facebook to catch up with me because things are going a bit slow here today. It's taken me ages to get on today. But we're here and we're going to talk piping in a bit, but I have got new fabrics to show you. Um, I'm very good. Thank you, Julie. Hi, Jean. Um, hi, Jill. Deb, sorry if I miss anybody. Catherine, hello. Shirley, um, Gillian, Margaret, Anna, Kate, and Kate, and Margaret, and me Daisy, and uh, Michelle, and Margaret. Hello, everybody. Sally Ann. Um, how was. Oh, Abba. Abba was amazing. Lisa, you would be so jealous. Um, hi, Rita. Um, I have a sleeping dog. Oh, what's, I can't see the bottom of your message. Uh, a sleep, oh, what a wonderful thing to have on your lap, a sleeping dog. Abba was amazing. They were, they, I'm convinced they were there. As they looked in the 70s, I'm convinced it was them. They were there. It was just incredible. It, it was, they were there. Oh, what, what, mm, I'd love to have seen how it was done. Because they, um, so they were there and they were singing and they came out one by one. They came out of the ground to start with and they were talking to the audience, obviously not interacting, but talking to the audience. Um, but then they had cameras on each side of these big um, uh, like screens all the way around the auditorium and they were, they, they were shooting different angles of them. It was incredible, absolutely incredible. And then right at the end, the real ABBA came on, but there were still avatars. And just wave, yeah, it was amazing. So we had a good old dance to dancing queen, did me, me and my daughter. Kim looked amazing. She was wearing um, a bright yellow uh, jumpsuit with big sleeves and everything and the, the blue eyeshadow and everything. She really went to town because it was amazing. Um, thank you very much, me Boyle. It's me, it's me new, this is me Abba top. It's a one award to Abba. Um, I have tickets for Abra in January. Oh, Christine, you will you will love it. it it's just, it was just, it, incredible they were there it was it was them it was just mm. anyway a lot of people don't even know who Abba is like my youngest so who's Abba what's Abba, what's Abba? um hi Brenda in Kentucky hi Anna Sylvia hello um Sylvia's been to a quilting club this morning great to be chatting with my sewing friends oh it was yes I could go back I could do it again if I could afford it I could do it again um hello Susan cursed it. it was worth it though it, it was well worth it um, it's snowy in Saskatchewan, apparently. <laughs> Hello, Patricia. Welcome along. Benny's son was part of the team that put the show together. Oh, is it his son? Really? I didn't know that. Um, Debbie cried when they came out at the end. Oh, did oh Debbie? But it wasn't them, was it? But it was very. But it was very, very strange. I wonder if one day we'll actually have that live in our homes it's going to happen isn't it so you can actually sit and talk obviously it'll be recorded but people that have passed away i i would imagine that you'd be able to actually have them that bit weird but i'm sure they could do it. if they could do that with our i'm sure they could do it because we're reckoning the beatles are going to be next or maybe led zeppelin Arash, hello, we're having a great day. Thank you very much. Hello, Blodwin. Uh, Linda, Ruby and Coco say, hi, Bobbin. Bobbin is well and truly in the house and tucked up in the warm, but Ruby, Coco. <laughs> Ruby, Coco. Ruby, Coco. Um, Lois, are you out of sync? I don't think I'm outside. Outside. Out of sync here. I think we're okay. Seem to be going out. I'm... I'm, I'm thinking okay at this end. Anybody else out to sink? Don't know what I can do. Um, hello, Nancy. Chilly, she says, in Colorado. Um, finally got rain in California, says so, Diva. A good old jig to Abba. Oh, idea. You have to jig to Abba, don't you? You have to jig to Abba. Um, I think my lovely banana sewing machine will be going to... Oh... I will know more on Monday after the, <laughs> I thought so with your machine, Deirdre. Let's hope it recovers. Um, Lisa, my mum has been gone for 25 years and still nagging me to lose weight, get my hair cut, put on some lippy, etc. Rolls. <laughs> um, so, oh, okay. Out of sync. I don't know what to do about that because everything's okay here. Um... Isn't it hard to come down to earth once you go to a show like that? Oh, we didn't come down for ages. We had free Prosecco all night. Well, say free. Um, 
Try talking through your teeth. <laughs> Fee says it's a bit out of sync. Try talking through your talking through your teeth, moving your lips, T talking through your teeth, and moving your lips a bit. Is that better? <laughs> Hi, Sandra. Hi, Carol. Sunny and seventy-eight in Tennessee. Wow. Why are we out of sync? I don't know why we're out of sync. Well, the only thing I can do is just stop it and restart it, and then we'll be here forever. So I'm, I'm going to carry on. That worked. Oh, that worked, did it for you? Okay, then I'll carry, I'll carry on doing this. Um, oh, was the Facebook? Uh, something through was out of sync this morning too. I don't know. What is out of sync? Mayfair. That's when when the words come out at a different rate than your mouth moves. Um, but it's fine in Poland, apparently, <laughs> says Patricia. Thank you. Lois is going to pop it. Oh, Rita says it's OK. Anyway, I can't do anything about it. So apologies if you're out of sync, but um, I'm kind of stuck with it. Now then, um, I'll show you new fabrics first. We're not out of sync in Massachusetts. Maybe we should all pop over there, do you think? Um, and it's OK in Ontario as well. So wherever you want to go. I think we're going to have a very quick sellout. But we do have more on order, hopefully, for delivery on Friday. Christmas bunting, brand new in today. I don't know why I'm singing this. Um, so if you go to the website, it's a huge panel. It's actually, how many, how many pennants do we have? We have uh, 40. 40 pennants. And, oh, I'm so hey, come on. And it says on the fabric. I feel like I've abandoned you. Have you abandoned me? You're out of sync. <laughs> You're I'm, I'm not out of sync in Ontario, though. I'm, I'm fine in Ontario. Oh, yeah, yeah. Coffee. And Rita says I'm fine there as well. Ow. Is that hot? Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, take it like that. Thank you. And you're lopsided. Am I? am not lops. Am I lops? Am I lopsided and out of sync this morning, this afternoon? I don't even know the time of day. Yeah, oh hi, know. Brian. Am I, am I out of sync over there? Coffee, Brian. Vivian's out of sync. <laughs> Herself, okay. personally. Hey Viv, I'm getting your gin and tonic now. Oh, oh, hey Viv. Viv is calling you, Viv. Um, Emily wants to make a bunting using us as Christmas critters fabrics. That would be nice. We're not out of sync in Northern Ireland. It just seems we're out of sync in the UK. Now then, we've got two choices of this one. I'm a bit close up there. Uh, Jenny's listening while we're... Oh, be careful you don't get caught, Jen. Um, let's move that out. Uh, whoop, that's a little bit too far. Oh, that's back to where we were. So you should have done the word too far. Well, that's it. That'll be all right, won't it? Oh, no, you can still see me. Oh, well, never mind. Let's uh, one, one more little. Yeah, there we go. Don't want to see my knees, do you? Um, Emily says we're fine there. Jolly good. <laughs> Diane says, um, I didn't realise you were lopsided in Massachusetts. I just tilted my head. So, uh, no, it's not me. It's you. It's you that's lopsided, after all. Uh, out of sync in Canada. Oh, but Sheena says we're fine. Oh. Anyway, can't do anything about it, so... So this is the first one, and I can't remember what it's called. So let's have a look. On my website, this one is Christmas Illustrations. So there are 40 pennants. You've got 40 triangles, and they've even got their um, seam allowance lopped off the edges here as well. Now, they're saying that there's 40 so that you can make 20 pennants. I would say use a plain fabric on the back and you can make 40 pennants. I wouldn't put any of these on the back unless they're going in a window or they're going outside maybe. But it is a huge panel. It's absolutely massive. Um, and again, we had, um, we've only had them in today. So they're brand new on the website. And I know they're going to sell out, but we do have more on order. So when they go, which no doubt somebody's going to tell me in a minute, they've all sold out. Um, go on the waiting list and we'll email you as soon as they come back just to mention with our christmas fabrics we're not ordering any more in now so what we have on the website is what we have so we won't be getting repeats of anything coming in because um 
as far as fabric supplies are concerned, it's kind of over now. You should have everything that you have, and that's that. Um, Christian's only just finished one. Um, oh, hi, Alan. Right. And the second one that I have is Merry Christmas bunting. So I need to stand up again. Oh, which is this one. So again, you've got another 40 pennants in total. I'm standing up because it's massive. So all of that, look, get the whole lot. And that spells out Merry Christmas. So I think actually that was a little more traditional because you've got your um, uponsettias and your, um, what was it called, mistletoes. I'm coming in a bit again. That's, that's a bit a bit far out. That's better, isn't it? That's it. Um, and berries, vines. Is that winter character? I don't know. What, what's that then? What's that one then? What is that? Um, and stars. But again, massive big panel. Uh, Chris uh, got the Juki DX7. Is that what I, That's what I've got. I uh, just recently turned and switched off my heel options, hitting it too often by mistake. So my, mine's on reverse at the moment, so I'm okay with that. But I think it reverses quite slowly, so I might change it. My um, my other my straight stitch machine, which I shall introduce you to my straight stitch machine one day. I've been doing some free motion embroidery on it today. It's so fast. Um, and when you put your heel down, that one cuts the thread. And I think I might program this one to do the same. Um, hello, Nitty Needs in France. Haven't seen your fur piles. I've only got bobbin at the moment. Oh, do you know what we're going to do? Um... Because we've only got Bobbin, and she's she's very playful. And although she's five, she's nearly six, and she's very playful. And we're not going to have another dog to keep her company. We're going to start working with um, with barking mad and taking people's dogs in while they're on holiday. I can't wait. I'm very good, thank you, IOT. How are you? Uh, Debbie has. I d I did have a book wholly dedicated to bunting. Elsie, it's out of um, production at the moment. That's one of the one, one of my first ones. That ones. Um, I put it on cut thread, but as I said, hit by mistake. Tim, to the right crew. <laughs> I do find it um, a, a bit of a challenge getting used to doing that. I think when you're just used to, because normally with my foot pedal, I rest my heel on the foot pedal and do that as you do. But if you rest your heel on the foot pedal, something happens with this one. It's like, you know, I don't know, put your foot on the foot pedal and you get a gin and tonic. I don't know. Um, right, so that, that's the two bunting panels and I wanted to show those straight away because I don't think they're going to last very long. But we do have more on order, just to let you know. So it, when we sell out, um, go on the waiting list and we'll let you know when they're back in again. Um, hello, Sharon in Calgary. Calgary. And don't even tell me about using a knee lift. <laughs> I've never used a knee lift, Chris. I don't, I, it's not, uh, no, I, I can't, I don't think I'd get used to using that. It's got a knee lift, obviously, so is my other one, but um, I don't have to use that. Now then, we have a bundle for you. Brand new to us, Lewis and Irene Fabrics. This is the, the most recent range. And these we've had bundled into five half metre pieces. Isn't that absolutely gorgeous? I love these. It reminds me of Frozen. Look at the rabbits. Fairy doors. And, oh, this one's, oh, that is beautiful. It's kind of got a, it's not, is, is it metallic? What do you call that metallic? It's kind of got a shimmer to it. That is really lovely. Uh, they call them metallics. All the white bits are metallics. The gold's metallic, and the white on this one is metallic as well. These are beautiful. Um, and again, it is, let me see what the collection's actually called. The Secret Winter Garden, and again, it's half, half metre bundle. But it's, it's just lovely, I love the colours, I love the style, look at the owl, there's so much detail in these as well. And it's very, very fine. So you've got an owl on top of the, the trees there, and rabbits and leaping. That's a lovely one as well, but you get all five of them. So um, no need to worry about you know buying one and getting something else that matches it. You've got the whole collection here of five pieces all together. How to make the cushion cover with the edge behind you. Maggie, that was a plan. I just haven't had time at the moment. I do have, I'm on um, 
Crate and Craft on Sunday morning. Two shows, so I've got seven o'clock in the morning with my books. And at 11 o'clock, we've got some new fabric panels. So the Eden, we, ha we, don't, have, we, didn't hear, we don't have these on the website at the moment because um, we just couldn't get the stock back in again after we sold out last week because um, Create and Craft have taken the rest of the stock. So you can order on Create and Craft at 11 o'clock on Sunday morning if you want the Eden panel. Um, it will be the same price as we do them for on the website and if you're a Create and Craft Club member then you get the same 10% discount that you would do if you were a Half Yard Club member if you order from me. Um, we will be getting that back in stock again on the website towards the end of next week so you might be quicker to go to Create and Craft. But the other panels that we had is the same idea. So it's one colour at the top and one colour at the bottom but it's rabbits. So I thought on Sunday morning on Create and Craft I'd demonstrate how I did that cushion panel. Um, if not, if you can't catch up then, then I'll try and do a YouTube video, but um, my schedule is pretty full at the moment, so I don't have time to do that. I was going to do it today, but I just didn't have time. Oh, thank you very much, um, Mayfair. She was a huge fan of Linda Evans. <laughs> oh, really? Oh, that's, oh, thank you. That's quite a compliment. <laughs> um, okay. Geraldine loves the fabric. I, I, just, I don't stop working, Sarah, get any other work, I just don't s stop them. Anyway, um, have we got Anne with us today on Facebook? How's your husband? Do you want to let us know? You're normally there. She is, she's come, uh, come out of hospital and is at home, so it'd be nice to know how you're getting on. Um, just a few more, then we're going to talk piping. Um, oh no, Jennifer's got COVID. Oh no, hopefully it's not too bad. Pamela's got her panels today, lovely. Geraldine loves the fabric. Right, this one, brand new from Lady McElroy. Yes, dressmaking fabric. So, again, I can't, can't remember what it's called. Let me have a look now, let's come back here. Uh, from the veranda, this is a viscose chalice. You, you may have seen the, the Roman print and the, um, the Venice print that we have with this, well, this is very similar, but it's just, th it's, it's gorgeous. If you're making a lightweight skirt um, or a, a floaty blouse, anything with gathers, um, anything with tears, then this is just wonderful. It's a beautiful fabric to work with. If you're a Half Cloud Club member, there is a video on the website of working with um, with viscose and fine fabrics like this. It is beautiful. And Lady McElroy are renowned for the quality of the fabrics that they bring us. But I love the detail on this. And I know, you know, we've got summer flowers and, and palm trees, but don't you wish you were there? I went to Barbados once overnight. I was working there. I can't afford to go to Barbados, but I was actually paid to go there, which was very nice. I went on, went on a cruise around the Caribbean um, filming on the cruise ship. Uh, so yeah, to be paid to do that was very nice. But when we we land, no, 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 that was before then. We landed in Barbados, then flew to Mauritius and stayed one night in Barbados. And the hotel that we had had these big pillars leading up to it like that. And as soon as I saw this, I thought, oh, that's that's Barbados, that is. So yeah, I've been to Barbados once for one night. <laughs> Love to go back for a holiday, but that ain't gonna happen, is it? Um, these are 150 centimeters wide. Uh, or 60 inches and perfect for dressmaking projects. It's, it's, um, if you haven't worked with viscose before, it's a beautiful fabric to work with. And then this one is a cotton lawn. So you'll fit as dressmaking fabric again, so it's wider than a craft cotton. It's 150 centimeters again. And um, this, uh, this is quite retro, I think. I don't, I don't know why. Looks like hand sketches that have been coloured in. It's really, really pretty. So although lawn is finer than your craft cotton or quilting cotton, it's got a smoother handle. It's got just a lovely finish to it. Um, if you wanted to make that a little bit firmer, if you're looking at this and think, well, I want to make a bag out of it, but it's going to be too fine, then just put some firm interfacing on the back of it and that will be absolutely perfect for you. Mm. It's gorgeous. Oh, trying to work with lovely extra pets to club. Yeah, Sarah. I'm kind of thinking they might entertain themselves and I might get an even longer walk. That's the plan. Probably, probably won't happen, but that's the plan. Uh, any cot wadding in soon? Yes, Angela, we will. 
I think we've got some twins arrived today. Um, so they need to they need to go on the website. We'll have a look at that. Um, he's still at home. Oh, jolly good. Send him my love again, Anne. Hopefully, hopefully he's getting better. Um, hello, Martina in Melbourne. Lovely February. Thank you very much. Wadding for placemats, Jilly Jones. I would use um, a heat reflective. We've got some Bosal Thermal wadding on the website. I would use that. I don't. I. I, I wouldn't trust it one hundred percent to put a hot pan on my best mahogany dining table. I don't have a best mahogany dining table. Um, but apparently that's supposed to. Re if you use it in um, something like um, a lunch box, it's supposed to keep things cool or warm. So I would suggest if you use that, it may help to reflect the heat away from your table. If you're not going to put very hot things on it, I don't think it matters. You, you could put um, H30, H40 or an H20 on there. What kind of needle do I use with faux leather? Diane, um, no, 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 uh, uh, treat your faux leather. If, if it's faux leather that you bought from us, I, I don't know about anybody else's, but treat it like fabric. So uh, if you're sewing through thick things, if you've got a lot of seams or lining or anything, use a denim needle because it's stronger. Don't use a leather needle with faux leather. Um, a leather needle has a chiselled angle to it and the idea is that it makes a split in the leather and that helps to stop the drag of the thread when it goes through the leather and with leather it's a skin it will close over. With faux leather it won't close so you'll end up with a fabric with a slit in it. Um, you don't need to do that so just a universal needle or a denim needle will be absolutely perfect but just, just treat it like fabric, it's no different to any other fabric. Um, Oh, uh, Mia, we are talking piping today. So on Wednesdays, we don't do so much sewing. We do um, techniques. So today is all about piping. We'll get around to that in just a sec. Um, Jean had a two-week holiday in Barbados. Oh, get you. She didn't want to leave. Two more fabrics to show you. This one. Kim bought in. It's like a seersucker with ditzy flowers on it. I love the little random pink flowers. Um, but she said, wouldn't that be perfect for a pair of pyjamas for Maddie? And I think she's right. It's, it, that is beautiful and it's really fresh. And, you know, I know it's not Christmas or wintry, but isn't, isn't that just so pretty? That is gorgeous. Even if you buy it and stick it in your stash um, for next spring would be perfect. Um, Rita, uh, sorry, the, Diane... If you're, if you're sewing faux leather from the top, so as in the laminated side, you will need either a walking foot, excuse me, a walking foot, <coughs> a walking foot will be fine, um, or a Teflon foot. So if you have a walking foot already, try your walking foot. Um, if you don't have a walking foot, don't buy one, buy a Teflon foot, a non-stick foot instead. But if you're only sewing them right sides together, then there's no need to use a special foot because it's the laminated side that's going to stick to the bottom of your presser foot. On the opposite side, it's a knit. Um, so you, unless you're top stitching on top of the leather, you won't need any special foot. Just use a universal one. That'll be fine. See, it's like a tablecloth. I used to have see, it's like a dresses June when I was younger. It's quite a nostalgic fabric. One of my ancestors, says Susan Jeannie, was a wrecker in Barbados, a rogue, obviously. There was a hotel named after him. Really? The Sam Lord Hotel, which is burnt down now. That's quite a story you've got to tell there. One final fabric and then we'll get on to piping. We've got more fleece. Um, we, we know it's fleece time of year. Um, we're selling out of colours that we can't get hold of left, right and centre. Um, but this one is Paul Prince. Don't you want to make your cat or your dog a pet bed? Of course you do. Or you just love your pets. Could be a rabbit paw and you want to make a dressing gown out of it. They're very, very soft, these, and they're anti-pill. Um, Jill says, my non-stick foot struggle with the faux leather. Next time I'm going to try tissue paper. Tissue paper would be a good idea. Just don't, don't use talcum powder. Some would recommend talcum powder, and I don't like the thought of talcum powder going in my sewing machine. Guess a cat bed. They'd love it. It's so soft. So anyway, should we do? Should we do a little bit of um, piping? So we have two sizes of piping on the website, but they come in all different sizes. 
So this one is number five, which is a five millimeter. That's the one that I use a, a lot, actually, uh, around the edge of cushions, if you want your piping to really stand out and be quite thick. This one is a, that's number two, I think, so it's a two millimeter. So that's a lot finer. Um, but it, we don't stock all of these, but you can see piping comes in all different uh, thicknesses. And it's basically a twisted cord. And you can use it in so many different ways. Um, around the edge of a cushion is an obvious one. Um, separating two pieces of fabric. If that were two pieces of fabric, it isn't. But if it is, you can put a piece of piping across the middle of it. Um, so you can add it as almost like a, a, a decoration as well as um, a decoration in between two pieces of fabric rather than just going around the edge. The other option that you have is to use pre-bought piping and normally with this it's cut on the bias. Now with your fabric, I know we've done piping before so I do apologise if you've heard all this before but you have asked for it so you're going to get it. Um, piping in a straight line so as in if you're going to put a piece of piping in the middle of those two fabrics, just like with bias binding, it's in a straight line. You don't need to cut on the bias. If you're going to put piping around the edge of a cushion, then do cut on the bias because you'll have a curve as it goes around the corner. And seriously, it makes a big difference. If you have piping that's um, a piping fabric that's cut on the straight of grain, it will wrinkle up like mad as it goes around the corners, whereas something that's cut on the bias, like with bias binding, will stretch. With shop-bought binding, like this one that we have, it's cut on the bias anyway, um, so you don't need to worry about that. And this one is quite a fine one. That's about an eighth of an inch in thickness. So again, would you use this for piping on garment seams as well? Um, absolutely, the very fine one. This is two millimetres. You have a one millimetre as well. So we only stock these two at the moment, but you can get an even finer one. So yes, you can use that on garments. You know, when you say, what, what were you going to do with it? Uh, right now. A princess seam on a coat. Yeah, that, that would be perfect. Um, or if you're making, um, you know, on pyjamas, you normally see piping around the edge of the collar and across the top of the pockets and maybe around the cuff, then that would be perfect. I wouldn't go thicker than that for garments, but you can go thinner if you wanted to. And I'm sure you can get that in America. I'm, I'm, you must be able to get it over there. Um, I'd go again in a flash. Oh, oh sorry, talking to somebody else. Um, hi, Marilyn. She's going to watch on catch up. 2.30 a.m. and 26 degrees, a very warm night, says Mama. Where are you? Right, piping cords to make roll loose straps. That's a good idea. It makes it easy to turn the fabric through. That's a good idea, Deirdre. So, let's make some piping first. And then I'll put some piping around the edge of what could be a cushion cover. And I'll show you how I join it as well. So... I'll need my cutting mat and some fabric. And we'll cut it on the bias. No, I'll show you how to make it first and then I'll use this bias cut one to actually show you how to attach it and to bind it. So all we need to do here, this is lovely fabric. Oh, this, this is... Um, Three Wise Penguins with Lynette Anderson. This is what I think this is supposed to be. Is it supposed to be a Christmas fabric? But it's just got tiny little stars in boxes. It's really pretty. It makes such a good blender. So let's do this first. A, a piping is really easy, actually. There's not very much you can do to go wrong with it. So I'm lining up the fold of my fabric with my cutting mat. And let's take my ruler chop off that selvage. Now I know there is the maths for the exact size of, um, let's just chop some of this off, a fabric to go around the cord. But I tend to trim it down so I know I've got it exactly right. So this piping cord is a quarter of an inch. So I need enough fabric to roll around here and then make a seam allowance here. And this seam allowance is actually quite important because that is going to distinguish or define your seam allowance when you're making it. Um, so with a quarter of an inch, I'm actually going to cut one and a half inches of fabric. 
Mm, that's not straight. So I've got three times the width of fabric. And this is going to wrap around my cord. And then just sew quite close to the cord down there. So I need to put the zipper foot on my sewing machine, which to be honest, I'd not done before. Right. Hope I don't need to use that again. Um, that's just unplugged. Have I got a zipper foot? Oh, yes. So this is all very new to me with my new machine and my new, my new zipper foot and my new feet and my new stuff. Oh, go on. There we go. Okay, so I like to leave a little bit of cord poking out the end. Move that out of the way, that's not very tidy. And wrap this around and make sure the edges meet. And just put the foot down. And then thread the cord. Oh, whoops, foot up again. Hang on a minute. Wrap it around. I don't normally pin with this, I just find I find it easier not to but let's get started so we always have a little bit more than you think you're going to need lengthwise and then wrap the edges of the fabric together make sure these are meeting each other and I'm just going to sew that's just got caught let me move that out of the way now I'm not worried about sewing too close to the cord at this point I am sewing close to the cord but when this comes to go into the fabric, I'm going to sew closer. So we'll just do a short piece for now. <laughs> yeah, Lois. I've got no. I need some. I need some more tables and stuff. I've got nowhere else to put it. So over my shoulder it went. <clears throat> so that basically is my piping cord. Now when this goes into the fabric, the distance between the cord and the edge of the piping cord is going to be my seam allowance. So at the moment, it's about half an inch, just under half an inch. If that's fine for you, then leave it at that, that's absolutely perfect. If you need a narrower seam allowance, then you need to trim down the edge of this fabric here. So if you wanted to make it a five millimeter or quarter of an inch seam allowance, you'll need to trim this back. So the distance from your cord to the edge of the fabric is that five millimeter or quarter of an inch seam allowance. That'll make sense as to why in just a second. So let's have a piece of fabric. Let's go with this one. This is why that seam allowance is so important because now I'm going to line up the edges of the fabric with the edge of uh, the, the binding. And I'm going to sew closer into the cord. So therefore from the actual cord to the edge of this fabric is now a quarter of an inch. Now you can buy tools from Simplicity. I think they're quite expensive. It's around about £17 and it's acrylic block that you pop on the top and then you can trim the edge and it measures it for you. Trimming the edge back is quite um, difficult because normally you go this way but of course you can't because you've got your ruler balancing on the top. So you need to measure from this direction and maybe mark where you're going to cut it and then trim it back. The easier thing to do is a DX7. Christine, my new machine. Um, the easy thing to do would be to make this fabric a little bit wider. So when I've made up all of my piping cord and I measure my seam allowance, it's half an inch, make sure that whatever you're making has a half an inch seam allowance. So if you're making a cushion cover and you normally use a quarter of an inch, make sure that it's that little bit bigger so you can accommodate the seam allowance. I hope that makes sense. Um, Diane says, just wondering as a new sew, if Debbie could please show me on a Wednesday exactly how you go about cleaning a machine. I've heard this mentioned, but other than wiping it over, I wouldn't know where to start. 
we can do that now next week i did say we're going to put tabs on to the end i've got my list tabs on to the end of a cosmetic bag like such one behind me here plus clean machine and i'll bring down my um my elmer to clean because this is new so it's not dirty yet but that elmer is getting well used by kim at the moment so i'm sure there's going to be a bit of fluff inside there that we can uh, we can do that um right so i hope that's explained how you make the cord sewing it on um I'll do a corner here and then we'll go on to the shop bought stuff because I've got a bit more of that. So, so ignore this. When you start, I'd start halfway down here somewhere and, and leave yourself a little bit extra. We'll go through that in just a second. But let's talk about corners. So I'm going to move the needle of my sewing machine over if I know how to do that. That'll do so the needle's gone over to the left hand side needle over to the left hand side so that's the stitch line that i've already sewn i want to sew a little bit closer to the piping this time so again i'm just showing you corners here so don't don't take any notice of the ends so line up the edge of your piping with the edge of your fabric and so now when you're approaching a corner you'll never have never have an exact right angle on your corner because the piping has got to curve around this is cut on the straight so i'm going to show you actually how this wrinkles up as well this is why you need to cut it on the bias so as you're approaching the corner i'm going to snip into the seam allowance at about quarter of an inch or five millimeter increments not through the stitches but just up to the stitches so then when i come here i can fan it around so up to the corner just lining up the edges again and round we go try not to catch the cord as you go you can always unpick it if you do and then a little bit back this side so you've got this business going on in the corner and then when this folds over as it will do i say it will be slightly rounded and my stitches again are taken slightly inside the stitches where I made the piping. So I've just moved that needle over a little bit. When it comes to the second piece, so I'm going to plop that on top, line up the edges of the fabric. I'm going to sew from the side where I can see the stitches that I've already sewn. And move over even a little bit closer to the piping. So now I'm sewing very close to the piping. When you come to the corner, it may pucker up a little bit, so just stretch that out and make it as flat as you can. So here we go, coming up to the corner. Take your time. Whoops, that slips out, look. Down you go, up, down, up, down with this thing. And back down this side so I can feel where the cord is and I'm sewing as close as I can but without sewing through it so let's look how we're, how we're looking now so now when I turn it through I've got just the cord sitting right on the edge of the fabric now sometimes, particularly in the corners, you may not have got quite close enough to it. So check everything before you finish whatever it is you're making, because at this point you can still turn it back inside out and re-sew th so that's a little bit closer. But that's the kind of finish that you want. So you just see the size of the piping going all the way around like that. So let me take another piece of fabric. And I'll show you how we join it. I suppose there's lots of different ways. I'm just I'm just doing it as I've been shown to do it, to be honest. So if you're sitting at home thinking, well, I wouldn't have done it that way. But um, let me just take this and we will I'll show you what I do. 
no right or wrong as long as it looks right when when you've finished your project that's the main thing isn't it that it looks okay nobody's going to know how you made it or what techniques you used as long as it looks okay okay right i don't know what we're making on saturday yet i think i have to oh shall i do that cushion i should have the new panels it's all a little bit last minute we've got we've got um I just say we're not buying any more Christmas fabric and we do have some Christmas panels coming in which are launching hopefully on Create and Craft on Sunday. Uh, maybe I'll do a demo with those or with the rabbit panels. Oh, I don't know. Um, worked with bulk in my tune, love looking after different fur babies. Oh, I hope so Mel. I'm, I, I can't wait. I just want a house full of dogs basically. That's just, just want a house full of dogs. When I first started using piping, I was intimidated. However, it's quite easy if you love... Oh, thank you, Nance. Thank you. Let's join it. So, again with the shop bought, you may need to take into account what the seam allowance is. So on this one, it is half an inch, uh, which I can't think off the top of my head what that is in centimetres. 1.25 centimetres, there you go. So I'm going to leave a little bit of dangling here and I'm going to start in the centre and we'll go all the way around, okay? And again, I'm not pinning. So I'm going to move my needle back over a little bit. And let's, let's do it. So, so leave some dangling over there. You maybe not, don't need to leave that much, but that's what I'm doing. So let us... Lower our presser foot. And so, so again, I'm coming up to that corner. I'm going to put in a few snips. Bend it around. And again, you won't get a right angle. And with the shop ball, it's already got a stitch line there, so I'm just following the same stitch line. Let's go down this side. Up to the next corner, so stop a couple of inches or there we go, about 10 centimeters before. Snip into the curve, curve it around. And away we go, so back down this side again. <clears throat> then we have to stop because we've run out of bobbin thread. So you need to bear with me one second while I just change that. I happen to have one filled, which is very organised, I thought. Pop that back in there. That goes in there. Press a foot down. We'll do that again. So again, coming up to that corner. Bend it around. Take your time, get it nice and smooth around the corner. <coughs> Excuse me. Back down. Snip into seam allowance. Bend it round. So it is quite simple, but I, I think a bit of piping can make such a difference to a project. This could be the flap on a bag. Could be the seams in the side of a bag. They, they always look really nice, and it gives a very professional look to your work. Snip in there and bend that around there. Now then, I'm going to up, uh, overlap this a little bit extreme, to be honest, and just approach where I started. So I've got that. So I want the ends of the cord to meet. I don't want them to overlap because particularly if you're using thicker um, piping cord, that could be quite chunky. So what I'm going to do is to, let's just have a look at this. I'm going to chop the first end off here. I'm going to take my quick unpick. Irene, I have used my quick unpick today 
and I've left it down in the studio where I'm working so I'm afraid I'm using one of these common or garden ones not like the posh one that you bought me all right then I'm going to unpick some of these stitches so I'm just exposing that cord inside and this would be the same whether you'd shop bought it or whether you are using here we go fabric that you've made yourself so I want to unpick that by around about an inch maybe three quarters of an inch and where that little bit of cord is sticking out can you see that I'm going to chop it off so now I've got a piece of fabric that doesn't have any cord inside it and I'm going to fold the end of that inwards by about a quarter of an inch like that okay now this is a poly cotton polyester it doesn't crease too well but if you're using cotton give that a little bit of a press and then I can feel where the end of my um, cord is and it's actually here so this bit that overlaps I want it to meet cut it off in small bits if you're not confident and then open this out tuck the other half inside and fold that back over and then I've got the ends of the cord meeting I've only got one seam there and then I can sew back along that line um, Irene are you there Irene Paula says where did you get your unpicker from Alaska Pauline Oh, you didn't see what I did there. So, wrong camera. So, I've sewn over the bit where the join is, and then when you turn that back, there's just, you, well, you just see the line there. So, you've got a nice, neat join, but, uh, that's better, um, but without the lump, so you don't see two pieces of cord overlapping each other, which is another way to do it, I have to say. So, that, I think, would make a very neat little little pad that might make a nice wrist rest actually for my PC and then just like we did before with the other piece the second piece of fabric goes over the top and sew that right sides together and just keep turning this through and just make sure see here I think that should have been a little bit closer to the piping so at this point you can go back again and you can re-sew it so that it's closer but that's how I'd put piping on and that's how I join the piping as well so again have, have a look on YouTube or something there are lots of different techniques on how to do that but that's the way that I find it easy to do as well uh, when you use your machine the faster you go the more blurry the pictures really um, but very clear on the overhead camera oh I don't know why that is that is a very fast machine, so that's going to be very fuzzy. Oh, look, Irene, I have got it here. I forgot I brought it down, honestly. Um, she says she ordered it online after filling in the appropriate details. What, what website was it, Irene? Yes, I, she saw it. Here it is. Look, this is the, um, the unpicker that Irene bought me. And it's got my name on it. And on the one end, it's an unpicker. And on this end, it's a stiletto. And I, th I just think it's beautiful. It's one of the nicest things I've been bought. I love it. Thank you, Irene. Um, I wonder if Secret Santa will get me a nice posh, a posh and picking. Car I do have a posh and picking, don't I? I do love my own picker. Um, thank you, Susan. I'm glad you liked it. Is Kim's cushion edging gathered, or is it the same size cushion cover when sewn in? that is basically the same way as i made this one with the flange around it laura um, basically i'll do a video on it at some point if that's the that's the size of your cushion cover right or that that would be the, the size of the cushion cover you haven't got a flange around it this is a really easy way of doing it and then what you would do is to take your that goes quite well doesn't it I'm not going to cut into that take the fabric that you want to use for the flange so say you're going to use this one and however big you want it 
two strips down the side, two strips, one across the top and one across the bottom. So then you've got a big piece of fabric like this and then put the back on. So um, on the one, I can't remember what Kim did with those, might have been a zip, I can't remember. But on the one that I did here, it was um, an envelope back. So make your envelope back to the size of the whole thing, including the flange. Sew it together and then before you put the cushion pad in, you just top stitch around the edge here. So you end up with a cushion cover that's this big, but with an extra like frill around the edge as well. It's not gathered, it was just a flat piece of fabric. But um, I'll, I will do a, I'll try and do a video of that. Might be, can you hide a zip behind piping? You must be able to. I've not actually done that, um, Melinda. But yeah, I, I think maybe with a smaller piping, you'd be able to do that quite easily. Probably if it in, invisibles it. I'm not sure about the thicker piping, if that would work. But I'll have a look. Hello Shirley in Canada, how are you? Brenda says she's going to put piping on everything. Been waiting to see how. Um, I'm glad you liked it, thank you. So, it's freezing down here now. Isn't the weather awful? So, um, I shall see you again on Saturday where I will make up something with the rabbit panels. I don't know what yet. I, I'm using you, basically, because I need to do some prep for the show on Sunday. Um, but maybe the cushion, I don't know, I shall have a think about what I'm going to make with it. It may be the cushion, I was going to do a cushion on Saturday, please can you do a video. Got Rue this weekend. Oh, oh, 12, really? Where does the time go? Uh, Lucia's, uh, Lu Lucia is in Portugal. Hello to you. Um, thank you, Sarah. Debbie, Debbie, Debbie. Lisa's saying something to you. Oh, yeah, I got it. I got it, AOT. Thank you. Uh, right. So, <clears throat> Saturday, we will do something with a panel. I do not know what yet. Um, hello, Kamala in Germany. And Sunday morning, remember on Crate and Craft, at 7 o'clock in the morning, I have... I don't know if I get the known panels back by then. That might... Do, hmm, I don't think so. Um, 7 o'clock in the morning, I've got books. So there's, I've had a few questions actually about um, the tote bag book and making a bag using the template. So I shall try and do that in the seven o'clock in the morning show on Create and Craft on Sunday morning. And then I'm back again at 11 o'clock on Create and Craft um, with new panels, with the Eden panel, that's back again, the one with the trees on it. And hopefully, we should have, it's cutting it a bit fine, but they're, they're due to arrive on Friday, so we should have some new panels for you on Sunday then as well. Um, so thank you for joining me today. I hope you found it useful. Um, keep suggestions coming through if you want to know any more techniques. I, d I don't, actually, I don't, I, I miss a lot of them, but um, I do appreciate it. Thank you. Um, my ham and hash browns, ha Alan, really, ham and hash brown sandwiches? Urgh. I know you. I know you'll email in, Alan. You always do. Thank you. I do appreciate that. Uh, thank you, Dominica. I shall see you on Saturday. Thank you, Olive. Thank you, Mandy. Covering a notebook. That would be yes. That would be a nice idea, Lynn. I could do that. Oh, just to mention as well, really quickly. Um, I've got it here somewhere. Well, we're talking about Christmas. We were talking about Christmas. We have eventually got the uh, the Christmas stocking panel as a download on the website um, with instructions on how to make it. It was the one with the cuff around the top, which I should have brought down to show you, but I forgot, basically. Um, so if you want that bunting, if it's still there, please do be quick. Go on the waiting list if it's sold out already, and um, we'll try and get back in stock again as quickly as possible. Right, let me just do some housework over here a second. Um, Terry put the heating on really early today and I switched it off because I'm trying to save electricity like everybody else does, I suppose. Um, does the Christmas panel come with instructions? No. Rita, because you can do what you like with it. So, um, Kim actually with the Christmas panel. Oh, this, the Christmas bunting panel? No, it doesn't. But you just sew triangles together. So that, that's quite easy. Um, Comments on cleaning your machine. No, no, that, that's going to be, uh, is that Rose? That's going to be next Wednesday. 
we're going to make tabs at the end of a zip to make a makeup bag and cleaning your machine next week. That's going to be really easy. Cleaning your machine isn't isn't a problem at all. Hello, Sleepy Cat from Dark London. We're going now. You're late. Um, thanks, Linda. Might see you Saturday. OK, Liana. Oh, go on, Alan, I bet you say that to all the sewers. Um, what did Kim do? Oh, sorry. Yes, yeah, she made, um, what's she done? With the panels that we've got on, hopefully, on Crate and Craft on Sunday morning, she's been making table runners and cushion covers. That's what she's actually doing down at the house at the moment. Um, in the, you know, the, the design that has a, a, a present with a bow on the top. So she's worked out a completely different size for it, so it fits in with the panels for there. So that's what, that's what she's been doing. Um, Christmas cake in the oven, says Chris. Wow. Okay, I shall see you again on Saturday morning at 11 o'clock. So it's nice to have your company today. It's gone quick, hasn't it? It's five o'clock already. And um, take care of yourself. I shall see you again soon. Thanks for joining me today. Bye-bye. <laughs>